Glória a Jesus. Glória a Jesus. I agree with everyone with a piece of the Lord. I'd like to invite the church to stand up in reverence to reading the word of the Lord. And then we'll do this in the book of the prophet Zephaniah. It's a little too loud. Zephaniah, chapter 1. We're going to read verse number 7. And we'll all read, read it together. Who didn't bring the Bible can read it from there. Let us read all together. Let us read. Be silent in the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has invited his guests. Amen. The church may sit down.
Glória to Jesus. Glória to God. We can leave here uh, the lyrics in the projection. Glory to Jesus. Bless be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. My time is coming close. And once again, uh, I awake on you, to awake many hearts tonight, so that you may be part of this call, of this choice that I that you, um, have made in your midst. I'm giving to many hearts the burning of my Holy Spirit so that you may feel a little bit of what I have prepared for your lives. Beloved Church, do not be distracted. Pay attention to the moment which is uh, being awaited for my son, by my son. Tonight, I want to give you my life. I receive to my life, my adoration, my gratitude. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. I promise not to hinder the service. I'm going to be very quick. Because if, you, if I talk too much, I may create a problem here. Our, brother, our gratitude to the Lord. The fact that that we are thankful to Him. It is a, exactly because of this. Today, we have a door that has been opened. This place that was given to us by the Lord. A place where we came to speak to our Savior. A place in which we can come and cry and know that our tears are not being left on the ground. The gratitude that we have to the Lord is because we have a, a shepherd, the good shepherd, who is Jesus. The gratitude that we have to the Lord is because He speaks with us. He calms our, us down. He brings peace and He brings comfort. He gives consolation. In the moment of doubt, in the moment of tears and anguish, He has the right word. And this open door here, this location the Lord has given us, is a blessing. Because we live in a world in which the uncertainty the injustice, the evil, takes takes a hold of everything. 
We live in a world in which there is no more calm. No matter how much you seek for a place in order to come to your house and rest and to be with your family, there is no place of rest in the world. That's why the Lord gave us this place here. That's because in this place we can do this. Here we can bring our families and see our children growing on the path of the Lord and having the assurance that tomorrow does not belong to us, belongs to the Lord. The world in which many see their children leaving their homes, but they don't see them returning to, the, to their homes. We live in a country considered a uh, first world country, but not even here. You have security. Uh, uh, one week you go, your child goes to a school, to a college, and comes a crazy and with a gun and kills. That's the world in which we are living. But the Lord has opened this door here. Because here we can rest on the Lord. Here we can, we can place on the presence of the Lord everything that we have, our businesses, our families, our health. We can place on God's altar in prayer and give to Him in order for Him to take care of them. And the church is thankful for this. We're not here or we didn't return here because we have a connection with an institution or our leader. No. We return here because we have a God that is alive. We have a God that is victorious. We have a God that goes ahead of us and He opens up the doors. Wherever there is evil, He is operating good. And we return here because we love the Lord. And we are here tonight. And there is one thing that we know and when we are sure of the day in which the Lord is returning. It's coming soon. And this promise was made by the Lord. That one day Jesus was returning to take his bride, his church. And that's what causes us to return to his presence always. That's the hope and that's what we're waiting for, the fulfillment of this prophecy that causes us to seek the Lord every day. In the morning, we wake up, the first thing that we do is to praise the Lord and pray to Him so that our day would be a blessed day. Then we come home from work, we glorify the Lord for yet another day. Because we have been protected by Him. And what what awaits us is this great day of the Lord that is coming here. And why do we do this? Why does the church speak, proclaims the, about the return of the Lord Jesus? Why does the church have this task, this mission? Why all the Christians speak about Jesus? Why does the save testify of Jesus? Because we live in a world, especially us, we live in a world where Evil is winning. Where the wrong has become the right. It is its opposite. We no longer know what is right or wrong. We live in a world where the oppression is so great upon man that causes men to take their own lives because they are so sad because they have no peace, because they cannot trust anyone. So then a person comes, a leader, and then you think that things are going to get better. No, this man is going to fix things up. It's just a matter of time. And then the disappointments come, the discouragement, the failure. Now you trust on an institution, and then you think, oh, this one is going to 
resolve the problem of the world. No, and it fails. It never goes forward. Everything that is connected to this life, everything, there's no solution. You know why? Because the world, the world in which we live is like a patient in uh, intensive care. The patient is there, simply waiting for that beep, for that for that sound that no one wants to hear. That sound that kills us just when we hear about it. That's what the world is like. We live in a world in this way, in which people are more and more growing deeper, sinking in, in sin and on what the world offers, because there is no solution. And what is worse of all is that people are getting used to it. People get used to what to doing wrong things. They get used to the uh, principles that are uh, turned around. They are upside down. They are, they are the principles. The moral principles have been ignored by society. We cannot accept this. We need to fight, and our struggle is not with weapons. Our, our fight is not going to be with our voice. It is going to be through prayer, because the world in which we live has no solution. There is no solution in, in, a, in a country, a leadership, a government. There is no solution, because everything passes. The darkness take o take control, they take over, over everything, and the families are being um, destroyed. The church are going bankrupt. They are inverting what was the call of God for the church, what links men to God, what used to was supposed to be a place of blessing. A place called the House of Prayer today, sadly. We're not speaking about A or B, we're speaking about us. We cannot allow this environment to become something else. We cannot allow that the, the objective, this door that the Lord has given us, be uh, closed. This place needs to be a place of prayer to the Lord. We need to provide. We as a church, as servants of God, in fellowship, we need to provide an environment for those, the ones that need to, to um, receive the Lord. When the children sing, when the praise group sing, when the sister gets up and pray to the Lord as the service goes along, that's what it is for. We can never forget about it. And we see a world in which everything is fleeting. There's no way out. Point out a, a way out for uh, infirmity. Show me a way out for corruption. A man rises up and then after that there there's a thousand opposing him. If you trust in a person, oh no, this one is going to change. And when you see, half of it half of the population is already against that person. How is it possible? How can you trust on them? How can you allow this person to govern and to operate? It's not possible. There's no way out. There's no solution for the diseases. There's no solution. The world has its trajectory. The text says that be silent in the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand, for the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. The way out for the world is not a, 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 a door open of a church. We are thankful to God for this open door, but this location in itself does not lead men anywhere. What leads men to God is the sacrifice prepared by God. It was what God prepared for us. It was His Son that was sent as a sacrifice, as a lamb, a silent lamb, 
Jesus went to the butcher, butchery, and there he gave himself for us. He was victorious in everything for us. The Bible says that a door that was opened up in Calvary, and this door is Jesus. The solution for man is in Jesus. There's no way for man to look for solution in what is material. You know why? Because the sacrifice, this, the solution, the way out had already been given by God. Is that at the disposal of man? Man just needs to accept the Lord Jesus, the Savior of their lives. Men just need to open their heart and allow God to take control of their lives. You want to have security? You want to be happy? You want to have peace in your home? You want to have harmony in your home? Allow the Lord to enter. Allow God. In invite God to be in within your family. Make the invitation. I challenge you. Make an invitation. And you will see how God can change everything. If you live in an environment that is bankrupt, you live in an environment where you don't see any solution, do this. You don't have health, invite God. Invite the Holy Spirit to take control of what you're seeing as a defeat, as of what you're seeing as something that is decisive as a failure in your life. You know why? Because the sacrifice have already been prepared. The sacrifice is Jesus. The return of Jesus is assured. That's what the text said, because the, the day is coming near and the church desires to be with Jesus. The church prays to the Lord because the world has no place for church anymore. There's no place for us anymore in this world. There is no place for us. He has consecrated those he has invited. The church lives its life depending on the Lord, on, on the Holy Spirit. And that and the Holy Spirit is what uh, justifies. The Holy Spirit causes us to return always to the house of the Father. And because a life in sanctification, sanctification is a life in which man runs away from sin where man struggles, fights with sin. And after the sacrifice of Jesus comes the Holy Spirit. And in this text, we see here Trinity complete. In a single verse, you can see the whole operation of God on behalf of man. You see the Father, you, have, you see the Son, and you see the Holy Spirit. And what is left for us is to live a life in prayer, a life where the Holy Spirit is pleased with us. Because the day of the Lord is near. The Lord Jesus once uh, told a parable that at midnight there was going to be hear, heard a shout, Here comes the groom, go out to meet him, with him. And the text begins saying, Be silent before the servant Lord. Men, be silent before the Lord. You know why? Because in the moment in which we are living, the world in which we are living, we cannot have an agreement with the world cannot accept and participate on everything that the world has placed within our inside of our homes and inside of our lives. We cannot be silenced. You know why? Because at midnight we're going to hear a cry. And if there is a lot of people talking around, if there are a lot of people speaking with human reason, expressing what is in their own hearts, in their minds. You are not going to hear the, the cry. But at midnight, there was a shout. Here comes a groom. Go out to meet with him. That's why the text said, Be silent before the servant Lord. Because our voice is the voice of the Holy Spirit. Who is going to operate. Who is going to represent us. The one who is going to take our place is the Holy Spirit. What man needs at this moment, the moment of darkness, of pain, of anguish and suffering, is to be silenced before the Lord and to allow the Lord to operate. Because at midnight, we want to be ready to hear the cry. Here comes the groom. Imagine, 
you are at home at midnight. You are there in the silence, maybe even in your bed. Nobody saying anything else. You only hear the children in, on the internet. They don't say anything, but they are inside under their covers. At least they are not making any noise, but they are on the internet. Father and mother can go 11:30 midnight. The children will have their phone on. I'm sure of it, but then you are at midnight, completely silenced, and you hear a cry on the other bedroom, a child with pain. Everyone hears it. That's how it's going to be, the return of the Lord Jesus, in the moment in which the church, in the world in which we are living, the world uh, in which there are many voices shouting and people are walking uh, with uh, bowed heads, but the church is silenced. The church is depending on the Lord. The church is awaiting for the voice of the Lord, and that's the moment in which you are going to hear the cry. That's when Jesus is going to return with a book on his hand, and this book that was going to be the name of the ones who chose to live in his presence. And now I ask you, are you ready to hear this, this shout? Do we want to hear this shout? It's not a cry of pain, no. It's a cry of praise. It's an order from God. Here comes the groom. Get out and go to meet with him. But we need to be ready. Because come the, the day of the Lord is coming near. The day the, of the Lord is near. And what we want the most is this. Because on this day, everything will pass. And on this day, we're going to forget about everything. We're going to forget about tribulation, or pain, anguish, persecution, suffering, p disease. And we will be forever on the arms of our Savior. Because we are going to have in our hands the lamp. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who, who is inside of our hearts. The lamp will be lit because the Holy Spirit is operating in the midst of the church. In this moment of darkness and pain, we have only one assurance. Jesus is returning. And our lamps, our hearts, they need to be lit with the fire of the Holy Spirit. That's why, in order for this to happen, we need to live a life in sanctification. Because the Holy Spirit works on the heart of man, burning sin, burning the doubt, burning evil, removing everything, and placing only one thing, the truth. Because the truth is Jesus. You, you shall know the truth, and the, the truth shall set you free. The sin is to be left behind. Because sin doesn't enter into heaven. Evilness doesn't enter into heaven. That's why the Holy Spirit at this moment needs to work, needs to burn everything that does not has no purpose for God, for the servant of God. In order for a servant of God to go to, to eternity. We live in a place we need to be ready with the lamp lit and filled and and lit with the fire of the Spirit so that when Jesus returns, He's not going to ask if we have a lamp. He's not going to ask if you have oil. He's going to ask if you have money. He's not going to want to know if your bank account is large or if you have a, a house that is paid or a brand new car. No. He's going to come and He's going to see because the fire of the Holy Spirit is going to, going to allow you to be seen by Him. And that's why I'm brethren, brethren tonight. The word of the Lord is this. His sacrifice is already at the disposal of man. Jesus paid a high price. A price that only He could pay. He died on the cross. But on the third day, He resurrected, giving us, all of us, the means to one day be able to overcome death in Jesus. And while they, this ha not take place, the Holy Spirit is working in our hearts, and He wants to work on your heart. He wants to get you prepared. You went to here tonight. The Lord wants to prepare you, to give you this means to be known by the Lord. Amen? So, may the, while the Praise the group who is going to be singing a song. You will be speaking with the Lord. Lord, pre prepare me to meet with you on this day. Get me prepared, Lord, so that I may have the assurance that my name is written in the book of life. 
Get me prepared, Lord, so that I may be ready and prepared and sensitive to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, to hear the cry, which is, here comes the groom, go out to meet with him. And we're all going to depart in the twinkle of an eye. We're going to leave this world and we will be forever in the arms of our Savior.
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jerusalem is our greatest dream. If I forget, uh, how can I forget about you, Jerusalem? Even if I lose my taste, if I Jerusalem is my greatest joy. The joy of the Lord is also our strength. The Lord has shown also tonight. The gift was shared. No, right? And this woman, she has not found meaning for her life. She has looked to the past, and in the past, she was not able to find anything. And today, tonight, she is sad, discouraged, and she even lost the meaning of life. My sister. The Lord has brought you here to this place. You know, for this feeling, the feeling of Jerusalem may enter into your life and your heart. You're not here in vain. The Lord has a plan, a project for your life. The text that the brother preached about speaks about this. God, the Lord, has already prepared a sacrifice has sanctified, consecrated his guests. The sacrifice of Jesus gives you the right to enter to this new heaven, this new earth, this heavenly Jerusalem, where there is no crying or pleading and pain. And that's the, Lord, the desire of the Lord for your life tonight, so that you may find a reason for living, because our reason of living 
is Christ, and Christ in us is a hope of glory and hope of eternity. The Lord also has shown a man in his spiritual gift, in this man's mindset, he thinks that he is useless. He has not found any meaning for his life. My brother and sister, I want to tell you one thing. There is a song that speaks about this, and it says the following on the lyrics. Uh, just give me a second. I got a blank here. That's the one. That's the that's the one exactly. I want you to give worth of what you have. You are being, you are somebody that is special for God. God, He is concerned about you. In the midst of more than 100 people, He is speaking with you specially because you are special for God. Give worth to this. You have worth because a high price was paid on the cross of Calvary for your life. Amen. Lord, I want to, to praise you and glorify your holy name. To, to praise you for all the benefits that you have given to our lives, our salvation, sanctification in Christ Jesus, the presence of your Holy Spirit in this place. They spoke to our lives through the message, through the period of praise. Blessed be your holy name, because your presence is once again real in this place, Lord, in our midst. We praise you and glorify you because you have prepared us to enter through the gates of your eternity for the sacrifice of your son Jesus on the cross of Calvary that gave us the right, your people, to receive, be received for, for the Father. We glorify the Lord. Take us home under your protection. Pray in the name of the Holy name of Jesus. You know, I may say the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit with, with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. You who are here with us, my brother and sister, you are welcome to this place. We're going to have this week services on Tuesday at 8 o'clock and Thursday at 8 o'clock p.m. And this coming weekend, on Saturday night and Sunday morning and Sunday night, we're not going to have service because the church is going to be participating on a seminar there in Orlando, right? We're not going to have service Sunday night. So we have Tuesday and Thursday, and from this moment already, you are invited to participate with us. If you want a prayer for a life, a clarification about what was said in the spiritual gifts, uh, or of the moment in which you are living, the brethren are here to give you the proper assistance. Amen.